lovely to meet you, Mario Martoni, director of uh, Nostalgia, which will shortly be released in the UK. We are here at the Curzon offices. I'm Abla Kandela from the Garden Cinema with my colleague Marzia, who is joining me. We've both watched the film and we're really pleased to be speaking to you today about it. Um, please do, I know you have a translator, so please do interrupt me whenever um, it gets a bit long or convoluted. Um, the first question, slightly obvious uh, starting point for us, is we know the film is based on a novel, and we were wondering what was it about that particular story that spoke to you and, want, and you, made you want to tell it visually? In, in the novel there is a strong story, uh, beautiful characters, the story of two friends, a tragic story be, between two friends, very close, and uh, but not only because th there is a, an atmosphere. No, no nostalgia is uh, in this novel, I, and I hope in the movie is uh, an atmosphere, something uh, taking everything: the story, the characters, uh, uh, the city, and not only the city of Naples, because. Uh, Felice come from Cairo, and so this this kind of nostalgia is something of very Mediterranean. Um, so for me, that was important: the story and the atmosphere of the novel. That's exactly what Marcy and I were talking yeah. about. The sense of nostalgia is very loaded, and I felt like it would speak to the audience in very intimate ways. That's how I felt the film works on so many levels. Now, funnily enough, you're Italian. Mm. I'm originally from Lebanon, so we're Mediterranean. And it spoke to me in, in so many ways. A very quick question. Um, I'm very impressed with... Oh, Paul Francesco. I keep calling it John Franco. Who I've seen in many films, who I think is a <clears> wonderful <throat> actor. His Arabic is very good. Be because Favino is a monster, yes. <laughs> so he, 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 he studied uh, Arabian. But the interesting thing is with the uh, Egyptian accent. Yes. Uh, so was very very. But he studied very strong. But uh, uh, of course he, he had a, a enormous talent for not only, of course, for. To play, but also on on the on the languages. The intonation. Yes, because you you uh, uh, you are from Lebanon and you feel the uh, you listen that there is uh, Arabic. Uh, yes. The, um, but but it, my speaks also Neapolitan. It's, it's not so easy to speak well Neapolitan. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult dialect. Uh, I am very exigent about uh, to speak in mm. Neapolitan if you are not Neapolitan. <clears throat> and uh, Favino, uh, it's, his performance in, um, is, in, um, is very strong in, 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 in this sense. The, the, the work of the language, the metamorph of the language during the movie. That's it. I mean, the, the first scene of him in the airplane, something really weird happened where it opened and I was like, oh, that's the actor from Aranza Criminale. Mm -hmm. And then he spoke in Arabic and I was like, oh, it, maybe it's not. Maybe it's an Egyptian actor I know from another film I've seen and I got them mixed up and then it made sense. Uh, Marcia, you, you were quite impressed with the way it spoke about Naples itself. And you've yes. seen a lot of films shot about the city. Yes. Well, as an Italian, uh, I see a lot of films, of course, about... I mean, we know Naples is always described often as um, in his ferocious, uh, ferocious, or sa savage, or, you know, criminal way. Well, you know, always talking about Camorra, um, etc., etc. But what really... Uh, I mean, this film is beautiful, I have to say, it really moved me. And what I liked is this, that good people doing good things for other people was the most important thing. So love, just, you know, before everything else. So you see that kind of part of Naples, of course, which is 
Rione Sanità, which is a troubled um, space, uh, but you feel the love most of all. And talking about this, I have to say the most incredible scene to me was uh, when uh, the bathing scene when um, Felice Lasco uh, takes his mom and he, he baths, he bathes, bathes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I found this it, it's so poignant and so beautiful. And I had a question about this, like how was to shot this scene, how you build this scene, uh, because it's so, everything is so perfect, the silence, the light, the movements, and it, I think it speaks to everyone, because we are parents, uh, or, you know, sons and daughters, so. The novel gave me the possibility to, to, to touch the, the criminal uh, world in Naples, but uh, looking this from uh, a human uh, way, uh, not judging, staying inside the sentiment of the of the people. Who is Oreste? Oreste is uh, one of the so many boys in uh, in Naples, and not only in Naples, in so many parts of the world. Uh, uh, his destiny is very easily uh, abound, abound, uh, in, in the end of criminality because he's poor, uh, because there are strong criminality in the town, it's very easy to, to finish there. Um, but in nostalgia the story is between two friends. Felice is in a family a little better, a little better, so he has a possibility uh, to escape, but he, he escaped uh, without say hello his friend, so uh, he became a criminal, a strong criminal, but also he became a, a desperate man. Uh, this is the relation, uh, this is the human way. In this human way, of course, you see also was very important this first part of the movie with the mother, because when Felice uh, escaped uh, and lived uh, Naples for 40 years, 40 years, uh, many years, yeah. really many years, uh, he never more see his mother. Um, this is this is a guilt, guilt. Yes. Yeah, for, for, for Felice, of course. Uh, uh, so when he washed her mother, uh, like uh, Islamic uh, ablution, you know? Ablution. Uh, he uh, is yeah. uh, washing not only her mother, he is washing also himself. So the body of the mother and, and, and Felice become one. That washing is, is commune. Uh, every aspect, each aspect of that scene, uh, born from this f feeling for me. And uh, they they have stayed together like one one only thing. Well, that's interesting. You mention um, the the religious aspect of the ritual. I was going to ask about religion in the film. According to you, as the filmmaker, what's the importance or the relevance of him converting to Islam? I feel like there are so many reasons and layers for that. What would, would you say they are? For us, for um, me and Hippolyta and for Pier Francesco, this aspect was very important. Because our um, feeling of uh, uh, Islamic culture uh, is an idea of... Um, we have great respect for this, and also uh, we think uh, uh, Islamic culture brings something of uh, uh, quiet, a, a spiritual way to stay on the earth. And uh, um, 
is a, 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 a this culture probably for Felice was very very important because he needed this kind of interiority uh, the peace in, interior peace uh, when he arrives uh, he is so a, a, a sweet person and very mite I don't know gentle the, gentle uh, uh, and this, of, of course, something of his personality, but uh, it's uh, always something he uh, captured from from uh, Islam culture where he lives. It's very important in this sense the character of the wife. Uh, we we see very well uh, she is a woman uh, uh, very intelligent, very human, uh, very. Uh, Loving is Asmand, and the relation is uh, alla, at, alla pari. It's quite equal. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, so also was interesting also to 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 work on, uh, on because s- often there are so many, come si dice, luoghi comuni. Cliché. Um, Cliché. <laughs> In uh, about Islamic culture, but uh, for us it was interesting in Bishop going inside. I, I was a close friend of uh, Abbas Chiarostami, the different way you know, between Catholic uh, culture and Islamic culture. It was very interesting in this movie to try to, to, to joke this, this level together. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it, it did seem what was interesting, especially for me who hadn't read the novel before and I try to, when I watch films as much as possible, I try not to read anything about them so I get to discover the film you know, in situ it, there are so many um, it unravels so well so <laughs> for a, from the beginning you sense that he, he's, it's a man who found a lot of peace in this new mm. religion but immediately you think why has he been away for 40 years? Why didn't he come back to see his mother? Why? There are so many questions. And so it it elegantly builds up towards, mm. you know, the unravelling towards the end. Um, I wanted to just talk about specific scenes. I'm going to have to say spoiler alert because we're going to talk about the ending. Um, but Marcia and I were discussing the final scene where Oreste and Feli meet in this dark alley and we both had the impression that they were going to hug. Um, it's exact, exactly the sense I, I wanted for that scene. Uh, I, I said to uh, the actor Tommaso Ragno, Oreste, he said, when you call Felice at the end, uh, you have called him like if you say go to take a coffee until the last moment uh, uh, everything uh, must be suspended uh, and then we de- we don't say what happened <laughs> we don't say <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless I did actually physically react when I was watching the film <laughs> in effect it leaves you wondering if there is a, a hopeful ending for this and it's more crushing if you know if there isn't um Marcia, you had a, a question about i uh was thinking about um about how you shot for example we have such beautiful scenes of of the city um like they look like um pictures sometimes then we have um, Super 8 flashbacks mm-hmm. when we go back and is remembering these beautiful moments with Oreste. And then we have as well um, some kind of um, a neuralist approach, I have to say, because at some point you, you go into the streets and you want to meet real people and you show them. Yes. It's beautiful to me, it was beautiful because all these languages, in a way, they reflect the complexity mm. of the what's going on inside uh, Felice and mm. outside because we have the maze of the streets of the Rione Sanità but also 
these memories which goes all over the place. So maybe one um, language wasn't enough. So I wanted to ask you if if this is something you planned since the beginning to add all these different languages, or it's something at some point during the you know along the way you thought oh. Uh, I, I like to work in uh, on the languages, uh, different languages. Also, I, I do theater, opera, and for me, I like uh, the work of uh, visual artists, uh, friends of mine. Uh, um, so for me, uh, from the beginning of my work, when I was very very young in the eighties, uh, the contamination between languages. Is, was was important. Now, uh, in a movie like Nostalgia, for me, is um, quite natural to 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 image the different levels with different languages. Yeah. So the memories, uh, um, the present, uh, the neorealistic, the like a documentary. And then the story, like a Greek tragedy, you know. So, I, so you have um, stro few strong characters and a chorus. So there are many levels. But at this point of uh, my work, <laughs> I say it's like uh, it's, it's like natural. And, uh, I, I, it's, I don't think too much about this. It's, it it happened. Yeah. Well, speaking of your career thus far, where do you feel um, this film sits? Do you feel do you feel like this film is very different to your previous work? It opens up new things that you'd like to explore in the future. Uh, no, my works. Uh, I, I mean, so many works, uh, different works. Also, I like I said before in theater uh, and. And opera. So my my works are like uh, not so. I don't know how archipelago. Come si dice? Archipelago. Uh, so uh, so many, many uh, all these islands are often connected between them. Also in the time, uh, for example, nostalgia is very connect with uh, L'amore molesto in my movie of 1995 from the first novel of Elena Ferrante. There are many points um, of contact. So, uh, and so sometimes my works uh, speak with you, speak each other mm -hmm. uh, during the time, uh, also with many years of uh, distance. Francesco Di Leva. Si. It's amazing, like mm. every actor in mm. the film. And also, uh, if you can tell us a bit about the story of him, because it's, it's a kind of because how you chose him to mm. play the, yes. the priest. And uh, uh, we wrote the screenplay uh, on Francesco, yeah. because Francesco is an actor who uh, started with me many years ago. and. Um, but he is uh, he's, uh, he lives in uh, in the um, uh, in la periferia di Napoli in, in the suburbs. Uh, okay. uh, um, um, he, he, he worked with the, he works not only worked but he works with the, um, girls and boys in, of in, with story very difficult uh, like. Uh, the priest of the Santa, mm -hmm. exactly the same. So um, Francesco was the perfect to 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 do the role. Not not only because he, uh, because he is a wonderful actor, but uh, there is something of true in uh, in his capacity to relate uh, of relation with with these guys, with this all all the community. the community <laughs> of, of the. And, and, so, and so there is some, it's a wonderful actor. Yeah, he is. Um, thank you very much. I think thank we're not going to take up more of your time. That was brilliant. I my English. I that was so was impressive, wonderful. I have to say. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, hey, 25 minutes solid. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Also for